Hey, Olivia. My name's Diane. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for earlier. Oh, hey there, Diane. I can't believe I'm only just talking to my little brother's wife for the first time. I wanted to introduce myself to you today, but I was so tied up with everything I didn't get a chance. I wanted to meet you too, sweetie. Don't worry about it, though. I get that you had a lot on your plate. So, Diane, huh? It's nice to finally speak to you. It's a shame we still haven't been able to meet for real. I was hoping I could see you before you went home, but I guess it couldn't be helped. I've been waiting for Gary to tell me your name for ages now. Sorry about that. I did want to stay, but I had some urgent plans that I just couldn't break away from, so I had to go home. But fear not, because Gary gave me your phone number. We're finally in touch. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Here's to a long, bright future as sisters-in-law. Yeah, right. Anyway, Olivia. I hope you don't think I'm rude in saying that, but the look on your face earlier was hilarious. Weren't you a little too surprised when me and Gary showed up? He looked like you'd seen a ghost. It's only natural I'd be surprised. To anyone would be a little shocked if their estranged brother who they hadn't heard from for years suddenly showed up at their house out of the blue. That would be surprising enough on its own, but... I got hit with a double whammy when I realized he was married and brought his new wife along. My jaw almost hit the floor. When did you get married? The wedding was almost half a year ago. Hey, Olivia, want to hear the story of how we met? I'd love to hear it one day. But if you don't mind me asking, why did you guys come? It's not that I wasn't pleased to see you, but I was a little surprised when you went home so soon after coming out all this way to see us. We just wanted to see your guys' reaction. Any girl would be curious about what her man's family are like, no? Gary told me so many stories about you guys since we met that I was really eager to see you in the flesh. I wanted to know what kind of house you lived in, too. And boy, was I impressed. It's beautiful. Is it a new build? Newish. We had it built around five years back. I was blown away when I realized you lived in such a trendy house. Did you have it built through Peeps Homes? Yeah. Wow, how did you know? You've got a good eye for this kind of thing, huh? I was super surprised when I saw it for the first time, too. My mom had built it while I was living out in Singapore for work, so I wasn't there for the grand unveiling. I think a house that marvelous is wasted with just you and your sick mom in it. She gets admitted to the hospital all the time, right? Gary told me all about how many different illnesses and ailments she has. Not to mention all the medications she's on. Her medicine cabinet must be like a mini pharmacy. Anyways, her constantly being in and out of the hospital like that must mean you're basically living there on your own. Sure, it used to be that way, but she's been resting up at home a lot lately, so it feels less like I'm on my own again now. Besides, being a new build, it's really well insulated, which makes it perfect for my mom to recover in. To be honest, I'd say I feel more peace of mind when she's here with me than when she's in the hospital. The ventilation's great, and we get this lovely, refreshing breeze that passes through the house in the day. The lighting's amazing, and we can even see the Rocky Mountains from the north side windows. For my mom, who spends a lot of time in bed, it's the perfect house. I can't imagine any hospital even coming close to this level of comfort. Wow, really? That sounds so cool. It was rainy and misty today, so I didn't notice the Rocky Mountains. But that must be such a picturesque view. I have to ask you this, Diane. But don't you and my brother have any intention of helping out with my mom's care? I'm finding it really difficult on my own. 
What? In no way, that ain't gonna be happening, sweetie. Why would we go out of our way to take on the burden of something we know is gonna eat up huge chunks of our time and stress the living heck out of us? What kind of masochists do you take us for? I see. Meh, fine, whatever, I guess. I didn't expect anything of you to begin with, so I can't say I'm surprised. Everyone knows that looking after elderly parents is the eldest daughter's job. I get that you might be struggling, but don't you think trying to palm your responsibilities off onto your little bro and his wife just because they happen to pay you a visit is a tad brazen? Don't you think this presumptuous attitude of yours might have had something to do with you not hearing from Gary for years? Wow, Diane, do you even know how ridiculous that sounds? I'm pretty sure the only reason my brother didn't come home is because he felt awkward and embarrassed. He was scared of me lecturing him for what he did, wasn't he? Surely he must have told you about everything that happened. A lecturing? Everything that happened? What do you mean? Oh, so he kept it quiet from you then, did he? How convenient. Gary took my mom's wedding ring without her permission and sold it for cheap at a pawn shop. He's always been the troublemaker of the family. I could go on all day about the never-ending list of crap he's pulled over the years. For example, the time he bought himself a new Porsche with our dad's life insurance payout when he died. Surely that's your mom's fault for not giving him a big enough cut of the money. What else was he supposed to do if he was struggling? Wow, seriously? Even hearing tales of my brother's stupendous scumbaggery doesn't put you off of him? Gary's my husband. We're a team, and I'll always have his back no matter what. That's what being married is all about. Forgive me if this is a rude question, but what exactly is it about my brother that you like? He's handsome! Oh, I see. He's just my type. Not only is he handsome, but he's rugged, masculine, charming. He has all the traits a man should have. He really is amazing. I'm pleased to hear you think so highly of him. Anyway, would you mind telling him I'd like him to come and visit our mom every now and then? I hate to say it, but she's been getting so much worse lately that there's no telling when something serious might happen. I'd feel awful if they never got to see each other again. I think he should make the most of the time we all have together while we have it, because one day it'll be too late. And I don't want him to spend the rest of his life full of regret. Yes, boss, I'll pass on the message! Hey, Olivia, long time no speak. Me and Gary are going to be living with you at your mom's place from starting today. Our things will be arriving just after noon, so be a darling and get ready to bring it all inside for us. Excuse me? We'll be there in about 30 minutes. Start preparing the buffet, sweetie. We're starving. We're going to need supper later on as well. I'll take a roast duck with plum sauce, mushrooms, mixed vegetables, and cashew nuts. Gary said he wants lasagna with cottage cheese, eggplant, spinach, oh, and of course, we'll both be needing champagne and plenty of it. Whoa, 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 just slow down for a second there, Diane. Can we start back at the beginning? Would you mind explaining what you mean when you say you're going to be living with us? Actually, you know what? Before that, how about you explain what the hell you've been playing at all this time? You didn't even show up at mom's funeral. Do you have any idea how many times we tried contacting you? You think we have enough free time on our hands to be answering your phone calls? We were busy getting ready for the move. You should have told us the old lady looked ready to kick the bucket if you wanted us to come. You can hardly expect us to drop everything and rush over for the funeral at a moment's notice. Removal vans don't come cheap, you know. What the hell are you talking about, Olivia? This is the first I've heard of you moving house. 
You're the only one left at your mom's place since she died, right? You must be lonely. We're gonna do you a huge favor and come keep you company because we're so kind. Besides, a house that magnificent is wasted on a single woman like you. It's such an amazing place. We think it at least deserves the respect of being lived in properly. Wow, so that's why you took it upon yourself to decide you're coming to live with me, is it? This house isn't wasted on me at all. Don't be so arrogant. Oh, yes, it is. It's wasted on you, and me and Gary are going to fix that. It makes far more sense for a couple like us to live there, because unlike you, we have a future. We'll probably have kids before long. Then Gary will inherit the house, and we can live there with our new family happily ever after. Wait a sec. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? That I should leave? Why should I? I lived here for the last five years with mom before she passed away. I was responsible for all of her care. All of the housework, paid the bills, did all the grocery shopping, and now you're telling me I should leave? Maybe all those things are true, but the point still stands that me and Gary already ended the contract on our apartment and hired the removal van. Your mom's house is the only place we have left to go. I can't tell you how excited we are about moving into our nice, big, spacious, detached house in the country with a view of the mountains. Our old place was a cramped little shoebox-sized apartment in the city. I can't tell you what it's like to finally be leaving that cockroach-infested hellhole. Who the hell do you think you are? You don't text, you don't call, you don't visit, you don't even show up at our mom's damn funeral. You don't show the slightest care for her while she was sick and dying. I literally haven't heard from either of you in years. And then you think you get to show up out of the blue and announce you're moving into her house as soon as she dies? I can't believe you left your apartment and hired a removal company without even freaking consulting me first. You're unreal. Listen, Olivia, I wanted to do this the polite way, but... If you insist on whining at me like this, I have no choice. I'm just gonna come out with it. You don't belong in a house that trendy. It's like giving the crown jewels to a peasant. Fortunately, it just so happens that me and Gary are a perfect fit for the place. We're trendy, we're hip, we're up to date on all the latest fashion trends, we make a lot of money. Basically, we're winners in life. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if house prices shot up when people got wind of a couple as cool as us moving into the neighborhood. I see. Things are finally starting to make sense. I think I understand why you guys showed up out of the blue that time half a year ago now. As far as you guys were concerned, that was a house viewing, wasn't it? Oopsie! <laughs> Did we get busted? I remember it like it was yesterday. I fell in love with the house the moment I saw it. My dream home. You don't have to worry about the place, though, sweetie. I'll take good care of it. Hurry up and get your things together and get the hell out. You're nothing but a nuisance in the way of mine and Gary's happiness. I see how it is. All right, have it your way. I'll leave. But I want you to know that as far as I'm concerned, you and my brother are the last people who should be living in that house. Oh, what's this? The distant cries of a bitter loser? Believe me, Olivia, me and Gary are a perfect fit, so... You need to hurry up and get the hell out. Preferably before we arrive so we don't have to look at your ugly face, okay? Thanks, sweetie. Hey, why aren't you picking up the phone? I've been trying to call you. At least reply to my messages. Hello? Oops, my bad. Must have dozed off. Sorry, honey. I feel wonderfully refreshed now, though. What can I do for you? What can you do for us? You know damn well what you can do for us. 
Now isn't the time to be taking naps. We just got kicked out of her freaking house. Help! Diane, you seem a little tense. Is everything okay? Judging from the state of the frenzied panic you're in, I'm guessing it already started. Oh, wait. You know? You know what's happening at the house right now? Yep, more or less. Then how about you freaking do something about it? Some strange old guy showed up and told us to get out of the house. Who is he? Do you know him? Yep. Gary was so pissed off, he was about ready to challenge him to a fight right then and there on the doorstep. He's gone for the time being. The old guy didn't seem intimidated at all. He just laughed when Gary started moving closer to him to try and get him to back off. I didn't catch what he said properly over the sound of Gary flipping out at him, but I'm pretty sure he said something about coming back before he finally walked away. Oh, really? You're right, that doesn't sound like he was intimidated at all. Right? Then when he was getting into his car, he said something about us regretting this? I can't put my finger on what exactly it was, but there was something scary about his aura. Like, he might be involved in some bad things. One thing's for sure, he wasn't a law-abiding citizen. Take this as your first and final warning. I think it'd be wise to do exactly as that old man told you. Why? What's going to happen to us if we don't? Who the hell is he? You'll never be able to get away from him as long as you're staying there. I'm the only one that can live in that house. Huh? You and Gary seem to be making a major misunderstanding. That house didn't belong to my mom. What? Then who the hell does it belong to? The old guy who just showed up and gave you the fright of your lives. Wait, what? That guy owns the house? You've got to be kidding me. That guy is a highly accomplished businessman, philanthropist, and real estate magnate who rubs shoulders with some of the world's most influential people. He runs several companies across a range of industries, from IT to real estate, from industrial manufacturing to hospitality. He's even making waves in the donut industry. He was in Time Magazine lately for his role of the expansion of the vegan hotel suites he introduced at one of his hotel chains. He owns land in over 30 states and has been photographed with every president since Bush Sr. Mom was just renting the house from him. He was technically her landlord. Well, I, I say renting, but he was actually letting her stay there for free. And me too. What? For free? How the hell did you manage to get him to let you guys stay in such an amazing house for free? You mean, why did my mom get special treatment? Because the two of them were married under common law. Married under common law? What does that mean? Common law marriage is for couples who want to live together and present themselves as a married couple without going through a marriage ceremony or getting tied up in any of the legal aspects. Anyway, the bottom line is that old man is well within his rights to give you and Gary your marching orders. You're living in his house without permission, Diane. I don't think I need to educate you on the legality of that. You don't need to be a genius to figure out he could take you to court if you carry on refusing to leave. As far as the law is concerned, you two are total strangers. Wait, what? You mean me and Gary could get arrested? I lived with him and mom for a long time, and we're on really good terms. He said he was more than happy for me to carry on living there free of charge after mom passed away. He was obviously never going to extend the same courtesy to the arrogant, selfish son-in-law who neglected his beloved wife, failing to visit her even as she lay dying in hospital. You're insane if you think he's going to let you get away with taking it upon yourself to move into his house out of the blue. If you have anything resembling an ounce of common sense between the two of you, you'll get out of there as soon as possible and pray he takes mercy on you for the trespassing committed thus far. But where are we supposed to go? That's neither mine nor his problem, Diane. Why don't you try putting yourself in his shoes for a moment? 
It's only natural he'd be furious with you for what you did. Plus, that's not all, is it? I heard all about the awful, disrespectful things you said to him. Something tells me there's a strong possibility he's focusing all of his efforts on clearing his house of its parasite infestation as we speak. I told you how influential he is, right? Money is no issue for him, and he's been through enough legal battles to know a thing or two about how the law works. He'll have you in court so fast you won't know what's hit you. What are you trying to say? That he's already talking to the police or his lawyer? No, we can't afford to go to court. We wouldn't even know the first thing about hiring a lawyer. I think things could be about to get very difficult for you if you don't take my brother and get out of that house immediately. I, I, w I want to, believe me, but Gary's refusing to move. He says we're staying and that's final. Wow, I see he's just as much of a moron as usual then. Let me guess, he's being a stubborn blockhead and refusing to leave to protect his wounded pride because my stepdad flipped out at him? He must be seething. Knowing Gary, he's probably thinking of how he can take his revenge. But won't the police be showing up soon? Olivia, please, you have to help us. Won't you try and convince him to leave? I begged and I pleaded, but he won't hear a word of it. You're his sister. Maybe he'll listen to you. The police? Hmm. The old man's influence extends far beyond the police. After what Gary said to him, something tells me you're in for a lot worse than a police visit. What? Worse than a police visit? What's that supposed to mean? Tell me, please, you're scaring me. Oh, I am? Guess I can't say I feel guilty. To be honest, you guys have had this coming for a while now. I think it's about time you learned your lesson. Good luck, sweetie. Help us, please! Olivia, I'm begging you. You have to do something. We're in big trouble here. What's wrong? Has there been another development? The house is surrounded by scary-looking bald guys in leather jackets. They're big and muscly and have the meanest looks on their faces. Me and Gary are terrified. We closed all the curtains and turned the lights off to make them think we're not home. We can't even escape with them out there. I've never seen Gary this way before. He's curled up in the corner, rocking back and forth in the fetal position, whispering. This is all just a dream to himself in between outbursts of hysterical crying. He looks pathetic. Wow, I see. So they did end up going after all. I wasn't sure if he'd actually do it. What? Do you know these people? Who the hell are they? That old guy, is he like the leader of a gang or something? No, 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 it's nothing like that. He's powerful and influential, but he's not involved in anything dangerous or illegal. And neither are the guys currently surrounding your house. Do you really want to know, Olivia? Okay, I'll tell you. They're all former professional boxers. I told you he runs several companies, right? Well... He has ties to the boxing industry going back decades and runs a couple of martial arts gyms locally. Wait, so basically these guys surrounding our house are a bunch of angry fighters? Bingo. Looks like he stopped by all of his gyms, picked up the boxing coaches, and brought them back to the house. With a short-tempered moron like my brother... A simple, easy-to-understand show of force is always going to be a lot more persuasive than a reasoned argument. What? But this is barbaric. This is no different to how the Mafia operates. But is it really? All they're doing is surrounding your house. Go on, take a peep from behind the curtains if you dare. They're just standing there, right? It's not like they're causing any trouble. Besides, you're the ones illegally trespassing in their boss's house. If you want to know what a lawbreaker looks like, then why not start by looking in the mirror? This is outrageous! 
How do you think the neighbors are gonna feel when they see this bunch of mean-looking bald dudes loitering down their street? There are kids around here. It's only a matter of time before someone feels frightened and calls the cops. The only ones who'll be in trouble then are him and his henchmen, so I suggest you make them stop right this instant. Hmm, I wonder. You see, Diane, every single house in that neighborhood belongs to that old man. He operates a communal living scheme for young fighters who need a helping hand in life. He provides them with somewhere to live and covers all of their living expenses so they can train and focus on their fight careers full time. There's not a single person in that neighborhood who'd call the cops on him. In fact, your neighbors are all buddies with the mean-looking henchmen currently outside your house. He owns every single house in the neighborhood? Just how much money does this guy have? Looks like Mr. and Mrs. Sheep moved into Wolf Village without realizing it. Oopsie. It was nice knowing you both. Please help us. You have to do something about this. You said you and your hotshot new daddy are friends, right? Then talk to him for us and get us out of this mess. He'll listen to you. I bet one word from you is all it'll take for him and his lackeys to go home. Please, I'm begging you. Isn't there something you should say before you come asking me for favors? Did you forget what you and my brother did? I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry I stole your house. Is that all? That doesn't make me feel like forgiving you. I'm so sorry for all the nasty, mean things I said about you. I'm so sorry for not going to your mom's funeral. We, we should have been there, and we weren't. But you're well within your rights to hate us for that. But please, please try and find it in your heart to forgive us. We'll leave the house straight away, I swear. We'll never come back for as long as we live. Will you pass on a message to my brother for me? If you ever even so much as try to come anywhere near me after this, you won't get off so lightly next time. He makes me sick. I'll be happy if I never see his face again. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have a little brother anymore. He's as good as dead to me. Okay, I just told him. He said sorry. He'll never come near you or the house again. All right, I'll tell them. Yes! Thank you so much, Olivia. I'll never forget this. Oh, don't get the wrong idea, sweetie. I only mean I'll tell them to spare your lives. Spare our lives? What's that supposed to mean? I mean, I'll tell the old man he can do whatever he likes with you both as long as he spares your lives. What? But why? We both apologized, didn't we? Sure, you apologized me, but he's angry with you for his own reasons. If you want the band of angry fighters outside your house to go away, then I suggest you go out and negotiate with the boss man yourselves. But to negotiate with him, we'd have to leave the house. Of course. Duh. Alrighty then. Time to dig deep for every last ounce of courage you've got and face the music. You can do this, Diane. I believe in you. Be brave. No, 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 no. I can't. I just can't. Please. Do you have any idea how scary these guys look? I can't go near them. What alternative do you have? You gonna stay holed up in the house forever? Look, let me make it real simple for you. If you're not out of that house within the next hour, I won't forgive you either. Did the removal company arrive yet? Not yet, but they won't be long. I suggest you get on the phone immediately and call them off. But what are we supposed to do with our things? We already got rid of the apartment. We don't have anywhere to put everything. I'm not sure why you think that's my problem, sweetie. But I can assure you it most certainly is not. Figure it out yourselves. 
I'm sure they'll keep a hold of it all for an extra day if you toss a little money their way. We don't have any left! Look, Olivia, to tell you the truth, me and Gary have been unemployed for a while. I quit my job when he got promoted a while back, but he got fired one day after throwing a cheese grater at his boss in the office cafeteria. We'd been struggling to pay the rent on the apartment for a while. That's why we decided to move here. We had no choice. We used the last remnants of our savings on the removal van. Wow, you two really are beyond saving. Unfortunately for you, I couldn't care less whether you're in dire straits. If you leave even so much as a single one of your belongings outside this house, there will be hell to pay. Olivia, please! This is going too far! How could you be so heartless? Do you want me and your brother to be homeless, do you? Because we'll have no choice but to live on the streets if we do what you're asking us to. You're about to destroy a young couple's future with your selfish demands. Is that really something you want on your conscience? What's this all of a sudden? The distant cries of a bitter loser? Homeless is fine by me. Hurry up and get out of my house. After that, my brother and his wife escaped the house in a hurry. Under the stony gaze of the group of brawny men gathered outside. They told me they had no money left after canceling the contract on their apartment, so... I have no idea what became of them after that. And to be honest with you, I don't care one bit. Their fates will forever remain a mystery. With that, I moved back into my house and resumed my life as normal. Of course, appearances can be deceiving, and while I know that all of my boxer neighbors are kind, friendly, warm-hearted people, I can easily see how the neighborhood being full of mean-looking guys and black cars with tinted windows could scare off anyone who didn't know. Which means that any shady characters or would-be criminals don't have the guts to come near the place. And as a result, we never get any troublemakers, and it's an amazingly peaceful place to live. Anyway, I mentioned what lovely people my boxer neighbors are, right? Well, it just so happens that I married one of them, a pro fighter, even years after the events of today's episode. Eventually, we moved out of that house and got a place of our own out in the country. Even still, we stayed in touch with my mom's husband and ex-landlord, who'd done so much for us both over the years, and we're still in contact to this day. With both my parents gone, he agreed to walk me down the aisle as my dad on our wedding day. It was the happiest day of my life, and I just know my parents were looking down on us, smiling. I'll be eternally grateful to my mom for bringing such an amazing, compassionate human being into my life. <laughs>